Good afternoon. I was looking forward to this moment. We had a lot of trouble on uh, on the way uh, he, to here, but yeah, I hope you can hear me now. I am going to give you a detailed overview of my technology. It's patented. Uh, it's called warm rosum beds. Uh, we've been using this technology for over 10 years. Uh, not only me, but other people and organizations have been using this technology so we can um, be confident about the results and outcomes that are there. Um, uh, can you see my slides? Yes, yes, everything is fine. You can move on. Uh, this is the first part of my presentation. It's about uh, educational uh, purposes. We have uh, a logo and we have a school of warm rosum beds in Ukraine. I always start my presentation with these small pictures taken a long time ago when I worked at school. It's dated two photos from 2012 and 1213. Both are taken in May. What do we see in these photos? We can see how different this land plot looks. That's the very same lot, but one year uh, passed from the first to the second. It was mostly clay, as you can see, and you can see how it went darker eventually. On the right side, it was our control bed, the regular kind, but even though it was uh, separated from the tested area, it is still uh, darker than it used to be, almost the same depth. We didn't use any peat, we didn't use any black soil as such. So it literally turned from what it was into a fertile black soil, thanks to the intensive natural processes taking place. And I would like to emphasize that they were natural. Um, we only facilitated it a bit. Now, this is what it looked like in 2015, three years after the last picture. And you can see that, that it's even blacker now. And like I said, it's not, a, it's not an agrarian facility, it's not a farm, it's a school. And all these transformations, they were possible even through some minimum effort on the part of the students. This is the very beginning of it, basically. And so every year in spring and, then, and in the fall, we would uh, plant um, green manure um, crops in the form the beds respectively to get them into the shape that we wanted them to be. We used some organics as well, such as the leaves and uh, leaves and such. Also, our students added some uh, microorganisms as needed. And like I said, some organic matter and they watered them in the fall, those beds, to make sure that it all works effectively. Like I said, we planted some green manure uh, uh, crops. And this is, this is what it looked like in the fall. And this is summer. This was also uh, sown in uh, spring.
And so this is what it used to be in 2012. This is how we started out. It was uh, quite a bit of land, by the way. And this is 2015. Some prior conclusions uh, could already be drawn. I mean, it was pretty clear that we could use uh, certain technologies to make our soil more fertile. And it was uh, actually 800 square meters, uh, mind you. So like I said, quite a bit of, of land. Now, what is a warm, warm rosum bed? These are centimeters. This is basically a composter. So you have, you have, um, you're basically composting some organic meter here in these, uh, you, here you have uh, wedged grooves. Again, their dimensions can be seen on the slide. And then you have 30, say to 40 centimeters wide bed itself where you do the planting. As the crops grow, it also contacts the organic matter, including in, the, in those grooves. That is how the crops are getting the nutrients, the water that they, that they need. So in other words, your nutrients stay in or close to your bed without any kind of leaching. And everything is getting to your actual crop through the roots. So that is very, very cost, uh, cost uh, if, uh, uh, effective, I would say, or efficient. So this is basically a simulation of natural processes. It imitates this organic matter. It imitates the forest litter as we know it. So why do we need the grooves for? We use the branches here to ensure proper drainage. Not, not very old branches, a couple years old, just to make sure that they decompose fast enough. Then we use hay or fallen leaves and such. And the content of the biota is much higher here. Why? Because this aerobic biota lies deeper, not 10 to 15 centimeters as with your regular beds, but 20 to 25. So the difference is significant, plus the concentration here is uh, several times higher than in your regular bed. And so the capacity of the bed to process the organic matter and uh, produce humus is quite high, actually, as you can see, as you could see on, on those pictures. With every next year, the soil goes blacker and blacker, which means that it is getting more and more fertile with more and more humus in it. So you can get some great yields of uh, clean and green agricultural uh, products to make sure the, process the processing happens faster to your organic mulch at the initial stage, you add some effective microorganisms or M's as we call them. First, you need to clean your plot from the grass and such, put it aside first. And then once you've dug out the groove, you put it back in, plus you add the components that you need. We're using biochar coal, for example. Now, this is the easiest way 
to dig the groove. One shovel deep. You go one shovel deep and then you work on the sides. And this is how you form the, the bed with that soil that you dig out and then later on use for planting. This is the groove or the trench. And like I said, we use branches, tree branches. We use grass, leaves and such. This was actually dug out with an excavator, but you could, like I said, you could use a, sh a shovel just as well. This is your warm bed, bed in summer. It is mulched, as you can see. The brown part is the mulch. Notice, uh, uh, notice how the mulch is distributed, not on top of the bed, but also on its sides to prevent grass from actually um, crawling in. So basically we have two zones here, the groove itself that is filled with the organic matter and the, the plot. Uh, this is what we call the rim. The most productive actually part, this is this part is the mo is most productive for the crops. Because this way, your crop gets what it needs from both sides. from the turf cover and uh, from the other end. So this is another way to present it. I called it a biota nest. Here, the organic matter is decomposed with the help of the microorganisms in the near root area. That is how the plant your crop can consume it right away. So there is no waste. You're not losing anything, but it is critical to keep in mind that it's not some random microorganisms or bacteria. Instead, those are symbiotic bacteria, which means that they live together with the plant next to the plant, in other words, and they produce what the plant needs specifically in those amounts that are needed. So they work together as a team. So in that nest, mycorrhiza is a very important player. As we know, in nature, mycorrhizal root system is very important. In other words, mycorrhiza is a natural extension of the root. If we're talking natural agriculture, we have to be able to see how this works. We have to appreciate the role of mycorrhiza and how it is helpful for the processing purposes and other purposes for that symbiosis that I mentioned. Once again, it is 100% symbiotic. So these beds help us ensure that the plants, that our crops get what they need. This is one of the biggest advantages that we can ensure that. That is why the yield is several times higher compared to regular beds. Black truffle mycorrhiza is most um, effective here 
because it is compatible with 90% of crops, basically. Here in Ukraine, we have Mikovital, um, a composition that is available in the market, black truffle mycorrhiza, I mean, and it helps you with your needs, with your agricultural needs. We have a system designed by uh, one of our agronomists that helps you grow several layers of crops, arrange them if you go for intercropping, for example. Now, back to the biochar technology that I mentioned earlier. Uh, Terra Preta biochar, you can Google it up, uh, is one of the best and most popular options today. So this is kind of a, a nutrients bank for your beds, for your grooves. It helps you control and manage the most moisture. It helps you control that microbiota nest that I referred to earlier. Again, thinks it is a multi-layered um, structure. So the biochar uh, operates as an absorbent, absorbing the micro and micronutrients, the moisture, the microbiota that we have from the decomposition of the organic mulch and such. And so all those useful nutrients, instead of being leached with uh, thaw waters or otherwise, they are gradually absorbed back, absorbed back. I mean, they are serving the crops. And as we add more organic matter, we also add some biochar there as well to actually improve the capacity even further to arrive at the biochar terra preta indicators or even exceed uh, that performance, including in terms of uh, turnover sp speed uh, or cycle, which takes only dozens of years now compared to the hundreds of years in the Amazon forests. Plus, even if you live in, a, in say, moderate client conditions, but if you use these warm beds technology, you can still have the same biochar as in tropical forests. Basically, this is what Terra Preta biochar application looks like. These are warm beds on top of uh, the organic mulch. We are applying biochar. And then uh, again, another layer of organic matter. So basically you do this every year when you add uh, your organic matter. Now, to make sure that you guessed the best quality. So, in other words, to make sure that your products are not just organic, but also that they are of the highest quality, they need to have all their micro elements that they can absorb. So when you are dealing with a poor soil, you can use a technology that is nice and easy We actually have that kind of uh, materials such as zeolite, bentonite, and others. For that purpose. Now, um, onto the application of the uh, warm rosin beds technology. This is a picture of uh, a vegetable um, 
garden and you can see the grooves and the intercropping tomatoes onions garlic and such this is what it looks like with the, the tomatoes for example you can see how closely everything is growing This was designed by Ivan Kabilus, one of our permaculture designers. This is another bed. I call it Borsch bed. Because here you can find whatever you need and everything you need to um, make Borsch. These are allelopathic uh, crops. Red onions, beetroots sweet peppers and those are like i said compatible with each other this complies with the principles of allelopathy when they are not competing the crops are not competing for the nutrients but instead are working as a team now these are the beets i think and carrots have just been harvested as well as the onions well anyway This is actually an orchard. And you can see the fruit trees if you look closer. So this is basically how you can combine vegetables and vegetable gardening with an orchard. This was taken back in 2015. Now this looks a bit different and the crops are different naturally. Another example, coupled bed, as I call it. Here you have three beds and, and oh, a couple grooves. Again, this gives you more nutrients and moisture for the crops. This is another kind of uh, um, warm bed. It is a circular bed in the center. You can actually, you, you actually have the core of your fertile soil. This is uh, currants in the center. And uh, um, closer to the outer edge you, edge, you can plant other vegetables. And it all um, grows real quick. Now these beds were, as, as, as we can see, these beds actually combine vegetables and flowers, but not just uh, some random flowers, but those protecting your crops, crops from pests, serving as guardians, if you will. And uh, it also looks pretty. Um, this is uh, garden strawberries. Here you can actually uh, tap into the potential of the crop at your maximum and you can see you can see how many flowers there were and this is the yield. I mean the number of flowers equals the number of berries. So it would take some time to actually harvest those. And it would be plenty for you and your family. This is another bed. And as you can see, we are using low growing uh, crops and taller ones. This was strawberries um, initially, as you can see from the previous bed. And later on, tomatoes were planted. The, and uh, together with onions and, and garlic. Now, oh, this one looks similar. They are using uh, fiber here, as you can see, black fiber.
uh, again, strawberries and um, tomatoes. All you do, all you need to do is just plant and then come and uh, harvest your crops, your yields. Another uh, example of our beds, um, how they can be organized together. And you can see how you can support taller uh, growing plants or vine, vine crops with uh, these props. This is what we harvested later on. The low um, growing uh, crops had already been, been harvested before that. So we had several um, goes at it. So bottom line is that you don't need uh, much space to get more harvest. This is how you fertilize the beds, your regular kitchen waste. So straight from your kitchen, you put it here. On the right hand side, you can see the output. You can see the yield starting from early spring and through uh, the late fall. These are boxed uh, beds with the supports. Once again, combining different kinds of uh, crops. You can see how the net is used to help them, actually to help the vines stay up. Now, this is in France. This was taken in France. This was actually, this bed was actually arranged by one of our designers, uh, permaculture designers, Vera Rodionova. So it is basically half uh, the groove and only one bed as such, but it can be used very effectively as we can see. Another example of boxed uh, beds, this time from the University uh, Ukraine from the Ukraine University uh, using the same technology. And you can see how, how much they were able to actually fit into that bed. This technology is also widely applied at our schools, helping students learn more about how the environment um, operates and about agroecology. Here you see that there are smaller boxes inside a bigger box. This was taken in Volin region. So every student had a 30 by 30 box where they could, where they could actually practice some agriculture. In the middle, you have the bigger box filled with the organic matter that actually fertilizes what's around it, giving the students the opportunity to learn. Another example of a boxed bed. This was, uh, I think, uh, five-year students. So elementary school uh, also uh, uses our beds, teaching students to to grow plants. So here we can see how we can use warm rosin beds uh, as an intensive module-based forest garden. The vertical um, bed is in the very center, as you can see. You can use it for perennials, you can use it for vegetable gardening, you can use it for herbs. And all of it is supported by the nutrients from the my microbiota in those grooves. And so around this bed, 
like the outer edge, we have um, six trees. So those are obviously tall. And in between them, you can plant other uh, um, crops as well. You can plant uh, berries, you can plant herbs. Uh, you're also using mulch, which is marked uh, with yellow. This way altogether, it gives you a multi-layered forest garden that functions as a super organism. So this is a combination basically of beds of different kinds and trees. So these intensive module-based uh, forest gardens are used by the students currently of our agrarian universities. This is a methodology that was approved uh, and complies with the principles of permaculture. Here you can see the handbook that was designed for the teachers. It can be used in any school of Ukraine, basically. Now, in this photograph, you can see how such forest gardens, uh, how they are, how they basically begin. Inna Pashenka, who actually delivered her presentation before me, had to do um, something with this, with us as well. Here, students can learn more about the permaculture the principles, about growing high quality food, and about keeping your soil fertile and being friendly to your environment. What kind of conclusions can we draw from the facts that I have just shared with you? As you can see, the warm rosum beds is a technology that represents not only a bed that is designed for growing plants, vegetables uh, of all kinds. It's also designed for um, improving soils. Uh, this technology is accessible for all kinds of people, all generations. School students uh, can use this technology to acquire knowledge, practical knowledge of agriculture and permaculture. Anyone who creates such bad will also contribute to uh, decreasing the negative uh, impact of carbon on the atmosphere because the human soil uh, created due to warm beds will preserve would uh, conserve the carbon in the soil we have several purposes and benefits, major benefits of these warm beds, um, which I just listed. Thank you very much for your attention. Thanks a lot, Volodymyr. Uh, if I may, I would uh, facilitate this question and answer uh session google translation is not always correct so i would do that uh, instead of google here the first question uh, what defines the depth of this compost uh, groove is organic decomposed through an anaerobic mechanism or not since we add organic matter and the air can uh, go through, it's uh, aerobic decomposition. The depth of the groove is usually at up to thirty centimeters. We can make it. Um, we can make it deeper, but you would need more organic matter. The optimum is 25 to 30 centimeters. There are aerobic bacteria, that's right. But if we also have effective microorganisms deeper down in the, in the soil, anaerobic uh, agents will also work. The deeper we go, the less oxygen uh, there is, and the more anaerobic processes uh, take place there. 
all of these bacteria, both of them, uh, help our uh, gr uh, plants grow better. They provide nutrients. Next question is about distribution of atmospheric uh, moisture through the through the entire soil. Is it true that the upper layer of the soil in the groove is mostly permeated by the precipitation? What can you comment here? As for moisture, it's really interesting. I studied that a lot, these processes a lot. It can take me like an entire day to, to tell you what I know about this. Briefly speaking, there is this vacuum mechanism here. Uh, the soil is uh, absorbed by this, uh, the soil that absorbs the moisture from the atmosphere. Since the soil is normally cooler uh, than the air, there is this condensation. When moisture is condensed, uh, it means that the volume of um, the volume of moisture is decreased uh, like one point five thousand times. That's the physics. And then when the moisture is condensed, it's distributed throughout the entire soil in the uh, groove. In order to prevent evaporation, we have to protect the upper layer. We can imitate uh, the uh, fallen leaves, leaves on the top of the ground like it happens in uh, natural conditions we can create this uh, cover on the top. Thank you. Uh, we had another question about uh, earth uh, worms. There is this specific structure of bed, uh, uh, which has the protection from soles and then uh, some prevention of um, uh, earthworms. Would such a bed be uh, good for plants? We have tested this structure. Let me say that there are certain laws that we have to respect. Uh, souls really love earthworms, they eat them, they feed on them. But we have to understand that the um, earthworms um, get uh, uh, the, distributed through the soil fa much faster than the speed with which uh, moles can eat them. So moles uh, can go through all the corners of our land plot. I was trying to take control over them, but then I stopped. I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't do that. Let me, let me say it th th like this. One more follow-up question. It's about de decreasing the depth of the organic part of the bed up to, uh, up to five centimeters. Let me also ask you how you can control the content of cancerogenic uh, matters in this uh, charcoal. Okay, get it. If we decrease the depth of uh, groove, First of all, we can uh, do that only where there is enough uh, humidity and moisture. If the climate is too dry, it's not going to work. You have to understand this. The sh more shallow your groove is, the e faster it will dry out, dry up. Uh, that's the first point. Next point. 
about cancerogenic matters, uh, substances in uh, charcoal. I would put it this way. Uh, how can we define the reference, references for cancerogenic uh, substance content in uh, content in charcoal? If we let's take raw materials, uh, if I mean the wood out of which we produce charcoal, if they c contain some cancerogenic things they might uh, partially burn out during the burning phase but yeah I, I haven't seen any literature about this we we have to we have to get some studies this uh, is quite a new topic by the way it uh, started being discussed only two years ago in ukraine by a permaculture specialist it's, it's a very in interesting uh, uh, topic for discussion Thank you. Another question is about Holzer uh, beds, uh, Huckel culture bed. Why are these beds are not suitable for Ukrainian climate? Be because he, the author of this technology uh, created it in the mountainous area. We also have mountains in Ukraine. And another question about buying your handbook. Um, due to lack of uh, time, I didn't speak about Huckel uh, beds. Uh, I met the author of this technology in person. He he came to Ukraine uh, he, several times. Uh, yes, for Ukraine, this technology is not the, the best. I uh, came up with a method of... Um, adjusting the halter beds for our uh, country, we can um, integrate them with my technology and they would work just fine in Ukraine. We were able to uh, ad adapt uh, halter and mid lighter beds. They are now uh, uh, improved by my technology and they uh, they are able to produce uh, uh, equal uh, uh, or organic organic uh, produce another question where can one buy your handbook and yes there is a handbook in ukrainian language it's uh, now translated into English. Uh, we would gladly work with uh, translators if uh, someone uh, is interested. As for Forest Garden, the university, uh, Ukraine, the Ukraine University, uh, published this handbook. Uh, it, it's also available in digital form. Uh, it seems to me this headbook is also translated into English. Yeah. yeah, let me say that we have just finished translating your handbook uh, about uh, forest gardens. And it's on the final stage, the translation into English. We are going to share this handbook with the participants. Uh, uh, later, uh, maybe my colleague can tell us more about where one can find this handbook. Uh, let me say that uh, Ukraine University has it first. Uh, the Ministry of Education uh, is now to distribute this handbook among Ukrainian schools uh, in any case, when you get our materials from this uh, school, you will also receive the handbook in both Ukrainian and both Ukrainian and English uh, version. We still have about twenty minutes left. I'd like to ask you uh, to ask our forum participants to uh, 
uh, voice your questions if you have any. Uh, Worm Rosenbad is very popular in Ukraine. It's very effective and we would uh, want to promote it internationally. We would want to see it used abroad. Maybe you have some questions about this technology. Now we have some time to get some more details and explanations from the author of the technology. While people are thinking, let me say that you are now looking at a lot of land with uh, clay soil. We also uh, Im implemented this uh, uh, this technology. We uh, applied this technology in uh, sandy soils with very dry climate. And my technology works very well in these uh, zones. The only thing uh, is to find uh, enough uh, organic matter for the beds and to to create uh, the right structure. Thank you. Dear uh, foreign uh, participants, can you ask a question, questions uh, using your uh, microphone or texting a message in chat? I have a question here, please. First of all, let me express my gratitude for sharing the details of you, about your te technology. My first question is, uh, what uh, kind of irrigation do we need for the efficient uh, uh, work of this technology? How, how do you do that in the dry climate? Do we need to irrigate if it's really dr dry? That's a very relevant question. Those who create uh, warm rosin beds, um, I usually discuss this question at the very beginning with them. You have to understand that you uh, uh, put a lot of organic matter in the groove, a lot of uh, worms, and bacteria uh, start working there. If we want to have good harvest, good yield, we have to provide uh, our beds with a sufficient volume of uh, water. In, in the Western parts of Ukraine, we have enough precipitation. In other regions of Ukraine, uh, it's usually it's not enough in, in the natural uh, mode i would say you have to add water you can have the sprinkler uh, it's like 10 to 15 minutes in the evening then it would cool down at night uh the the of course you can uh, organize drip irrigation as well it's more um, water saving but the way uh, we organize it with the sprinkler is much better this uh, nonetheless let me say it again that you have to um, provide uh, enough organic matter and you have to also make sure you have the cover layer on top of your bed and my next question is about the timing if we uh, want to to do vegetable uh, cultivation let's say we create the bed and when should we plant vegetables when exactly immediately after you created your bed in the in 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 the bed itself you never use the very center when i get it in spring summer and autumn 
the uh, microorganisms e eat uh, organic matter all the time. Uh, next question is about the uh, uh, root area. If we create a near a root uh, mulching uh, rings, we uh, facilitate microorganisms in this area and and the and the tree should have of course a well developed uh, canopy already we have done a lot of testing with uh, trees and i can speak about the trees separately i mean the combination of my beds with the trees First of all, I, I can say that the, my technology here uh, is like this. We have to create the uh, near root mulching ring. It would uh, protect and provide the tree with enough uh, moisture. You can, of course, make it a circular uh, bed, or you can um, uh, organize it in a different way. If you have a row of trees, and this is a separate topic already, you have seen it uh, in my presentation, we can use agricultural uh, machines to establish long uh, warm beds alongside a tree row. It's it's not critical which way you organize your um, forest garden. It depends on the perimeter of the uh, tree uh, crown. If your uh, tree is growing uh, and the crown is getting bigger, the diameter of cr the crown is getting big bigger, you can of course switch to the circular beds instead of uh, rows of beds alongside the uh, rows of young trees. That's my system. So uh, we are stimulating the plant to uh, to be to, to move closer to the nutrients exactly yeah probably at some point i can share the results of my study when uh, um, the trees a uh, two years three years old trees uh, yield great uh, uh, fruits thank you I also noticed one more question about yearly maintenance of beds. Is it necessary to uh, add organic matter every year? W once we create a bed, w what do we do every year? Of course, you have to do that because uh, this is not something stable. This is uh, nature. Uh, it's raining, it's uh, moving around in, in the soil. You have to shape it over and over again every year. You can remove a more uh, fertile soil created in your bed. You can add new organic matter in the bed and uh, repeat the cycle. Uh, the, the core uh, is to launch the my mycorrhizal process and also uh, this uh, charcoal, uh, they should be, it should be used. Uh, it's a separate topic, how we uh, pr produce or where do we get this uh, charcoal. It's uh, like a bank of nutrients for the entire year, this charcoal. And also it's a storage uh, or like a house for a microbiota. It's an interesting technology. Uh, and we now work in cooperation with the Lviv 
uh, Forestry University. Uh, they have the Department of um, uh, Hydro Environmental Studies, and uh, they have been uh, studying mycorrhiza of black truffle. They have great results, which can also be used in uh, my buds. Uh, next, next question. In your modular, si modular system, I understand that this is an uh, intercropping system, right? With your forest gardens, what kind of fruit trees do you mean? Uh, short trees, taller trees? What are the best? Which trees are the best? Thank you for great questions. The uh, technology uh, I described, uh, I, I showed you the uh, drawing. You just draw a circle with a radius of six meters. Then you create uh, sectors, even sectors of, of this uh, circle. Uh, there should be six of them. Uh, six trees uh, will be tall trees. Between them, you will have short trees. Uh, also, you will use um, shrubs. That's a system. That system has been tested. Uh, so each tree, uh, tall trees, uh, grow six meters away from each other. If you create kind of a chain of these trees, they can serve other purposes like wind protection or something like that. But that's, of course, optional, depends on you. With forest garden, you have to understand uh, that it doesn't, uh, doesn't help you create a black soil. Uh, because trees consume all the nutrients from the soil. So soil becomes really poor of uh, nutrients, whereas the warm beds help us fulfill this task in, in creating black soil. Uh, next question. Trees can be very different. The distance between uh, rows of trees should vary according to the type of the tree, right? You can you can create circular beds around your trees, or you can use um, like these uh, rows of uh, beds. It you will have a feeling you will. Uh, acquire it with experience, you have to design your modular forest garden depending on each uh, tree you choose. Uh, what I was talking about was something universal, so to say, for, for a universal uh, solution. I am particularly interested now uh, in hearing our English speaking guests. Maybe they have some questions. I can see a question from Helena. Please go ahead. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Uh, Despite that we are, despite the fact that we are meeting on Zoom, it's nonetheless very nice to meet you. Thank you for sharing your knowledge and experience with us. Um, we still have some time. Maybe you could tell us about your um, way of adjusting holster beds. Could you say it again, please? Yes, how you were improving the technology of Holzer, but we have only three minutes left. I don't think it's enough time. You see, uh, yeah, how can I improve Holzer's beds? But it turns out it's possible. The, the thing is, 
Holzer's beds uh, is very, very good, but it still has some disadvantages, especially those who are trying to use this technology in Ukraine, and it just doesn't want, just, just doesn't work for them well. There are a lot of Holzer's beds in Ukraine, and only a small share of them works well. Uh, people often ask me questions about how they can improve their Holzer's beds. What I usually say is when you already created uh, your Holzer's bed, you can improve it a bit uh, this way. You uh, make a warm rosum's bed on top of Holzer's bed. You fill it in with uh, organic matter uh, because the wooden matter is already in your Holzer's bed. It's already there. Mycorrhiza is the key. This high Holzer's uh, bed has to be mulched. I think we could could um, speak separately about Holzer's best because it's really interesting, but th that's a separate big topic. I was thinking where we could use Holzer's beds. People sometimes uh, remove old uh, warehouses or sheds and they have a lot of unnecessary wood and they use it for Holzer's bed. Last spring, I visited uh, Baltic countries and we uh, were, my colleagues and I were establishing Holzer's beds in uh, small villages. This could be used as a, as a basis. There are a lot of interesting details this holster bed is very good uh, in terms of restoration and uh, yield. I have a last question. Sorry, I'm really sorry. We we have to make a break now. I understand that there are a lot of topics to be discussed here, especially for those who have some experience of worm rosum beds. Maybe you you didn't hear me well, but let me say again, warm rosum bed has three uh, functional areas. The uh, bottom is organic area, and uh, there is also some wooden uh, matter, which is very good for fungus. Uh, these beds are very good for um, uh, growing vegetables and for that purpose biochar is a depot of nutrients plus you can use food waste and there will be no le leaching and right next to it you have this groove or trench if you will um, and then you can, uh, next to it, you can plant some uh, green manure that you can uh, later on cut and use for mulching. So it is self-sustaining. Yes, exactly. It is self-sustaining. And if you can um, add um, some kind of other organic matter, that is fine. If not, that is fine as well. And uh, so... Volodymyr well, Rosum invented this bed, and uh, any suggestions and questions are welcome. So you are welcome to try and test and explore this technology further.